All right, today we're gonna do something a little bit different. So I wanna talk about Kukata's story. And essentially when it comes down to things, I want to give you a bit of an idea of some things lore-wise. Also, I did ask a question on the community post. Does anybody have any questions related to the series and stuff? And we have some answers and questions out there. But when it comes down to things, I do want to basically just make this because I know for the people that does care for the story and want to know what the heck kind of happens next or where is my brain going when it comes to certain ideas, I want to at least give you certain stuff. But also clear up some, I guess, lore as well because I do not necessarily tell you exactly what certain stuff is or some stuff is not necessarily like clear and that's what I kind of want to do for this one. I thought about doing this for a while now but today is going to be definitely that day. So when it comes down to things, the big question and an old question that someone actually asked a long time ago, I think it was thoughtful, what is despair? And I have to tell you exactly what it is from what I read, from what I wrote out. Now then, despair is an entity that existed since the beginning of time. Once before all of existence was made, a clash between the light and dark happened, and that is what caused every universe to be made. The raw power of light and dark were sealed off into the original universe. When they clashed, parts of their power spread all over the multiverse, and that's how the sphere and purity came to be. Light and darkness are sentient, so in their own unique way, so is the sphere and purity. One is more alive than a counterpart, but they are both equal in many ways. Countless of the lives have been destroyed by it, and only few people have tried to fight against it. The Guardians of Despair, whose origins unknown, were created to destroy the sphere itself. The Guardians consisted of four members, Kaiho, which is Miss Aratome, Shitoya, Abusnek, and Cholshin. These are more code names than actual names, but a few claim it to be their real names. Besides them, the power of purification is the best chance to stop despair. There have been nine people before the current user to stop despair, and they all failed. The complete power of despair and purity is unknown, but holds limitless power. What we do know is that it takes the power of belief and will to make their power work. This doesn't mean its user is completely powerful because each user is different. Some might have an easier time than others. For example, purity can allow someone to suppress hostile powers for a time or could use their powers for a short period of time. It just depends on the person. Despair feeds off of people's desires and doesn't have a physical form. At least that's what we know. It's like it likes negative emotion and plays with the mindset of a person. Throughout human history, despair has always been there in the biggest disasters, living in people living in people either causing the problem or merely observing them. Many societies have fallen because of its power. Humanity is no different. And that's the gist of despair. And really, you've seen a few examples of that stuff in the show, right? But that's the basic bare bones of what despair really is. But I know that you got some other questions too that's not just about despair right even though that's like a big question but still nonetheless what is the what is the deal with multiversal essence like why does that matter every time jay summons a character to a world he ends up using that shit let me made a big deal out of it last time back in the high school dxd art every single time he summoned a new character into the safe haven so why does that matter well the best i can explain it is like literally death like you know how you live on earth for a minute then you end up dying but you go and transfer over to the place where you're going whether it's heaven or hell essentially that's what it kind of is like there's one place but to get to another place you have to go through like this tunnel or whatever or this and pass through this barrier or something like that and then you get to go to the other place and that's essentially how that kind of works for instance let's take kana for example from dragon's maid let's just say if jay wanted to summon kana to that world all he had to do is simply take the ideas and the manifestation of kana in that world and then send it through the realms in between which is obviously what we talked about not too long ago where everything exists and don't exist at the same time and then we also it then after it's go through there it goes into the safe haven and that's basically how it is right essentially what i'm trying to say is is taking what kana is something that's on 2d paper and turning into a real life person in the safe haven at least but there is the catch about doing that though now you're probably wondering well what's the problem with that the problem with it is the worlds in between or the realm in between really it doesn't necessarily lead to a safe passage as we kind of explained before with the twins if you try to go back to the world that you know he came from 
it might be a little too dangerous and it might not necessarily you know work out in the way you want to or even if, even if you did go back there's a chance that you might not necessarily be the same as you once left so and even when you some of and even when you send like the ideas and manifestation of a character back to that world, they could get ripped apart by despair in that between space. You don't necessarily know. So it's a chance they could go back into their original worlds, but also at the same time, more times than you are gonna make it, you're gonna die. So there's no real point of sending something back or going back if you just don't want if you just don't care about the risk, honestly. So that's not necessarily good. Also, every time he summons like a character from the, you know, his real world into that space and into the safe haven, it messes up something when it comes to the middle ground of that place, right? It creates some type of jank when it comes to the realm in between, and that jank can lead into some problems. What type of problems? You have to watch the story to kind of find out. What you really need is a safe passage for ideas and manifestations to reach the you know middle ground of the realm of between and essentially when it comes down to things if you have that safe passage then the realm of between will be fine nothing will be too crazy and out of whack but how do you make that thing though or at least how do you get a safe passage to work that's also like another thing that we just don't necessarily know next part is to answer some questions or at least re-answer some questions because I already answered them from the community post that I already put up which again if you haven't posted or looked at the community post and if you're someone that has watched the series and is keeping up with it then please go ahead and just type out any possible questions you might have honestly I'd be more than happy to check them out but anyway when it comes down to things one of the questions were is the dark version of Jay's going to get any more depth which yes he is I wasn't originally planning on doing so but I think I can find a. I think I can find a way of making it work, right? I think I can find a way. So we'll have that. And another question was, I think having a wedding episode with all the girls, and I didn't think about doing that honestly. I didn't really think about doing that. I would like to, because there might be a way to spin it, and that could be fun, right? I feel like we can do a way for that. Only problem is, how the hell am I going to do this in Kwikatsu? Because I know good and damn well that my system is shitty as hell. I'm not going to lie, my computer could not hold up a whole bunch of characters in the same scene at the same time. Like, it'd be pushing it once I put five characters in, right? So, we'll, we'll find a way. I'll see if I can find a way to make it work, but... I don't necessarily know how it's going to completely work if we decide to do that, but I would like to do a wedding episode, honestly, right? We already got Jay and Koniko married, so that's fine. So I would like to see how the rest of this kind of works out. We'll, we'll see how this kind of goes, honestly. And the last thing I want to do, honestly, for you as someone that has watched the video through the end and did not skip around, I'm going to show you two characters, two new characters that I would like to introduce into the series after the ruby arc or at least some time fairly soon but when it comes down to things now remember earlier in the video where i was telling you about the guardians of the spirit and how it had four members which was kaiho shitoya obvious neck and Trollshian? well you're gonna meet one of them right now which is shitoya i'm not gonna tell you exactly what her whole thing is when it comes down to things well actually you kind of would probably could guess honestly but i'm not gonna necessarily explain how things are gonna work out but let's just say when she left, you know, Saratame met, left, you know, Shitoya alive, honestly. Let's just say she hadn't taken too kindly what happened to her fellow members of the Guardians of Despair, right? She has some ideas of what she wants to do to Saratame the next time they meet. So, yeah, please expect some nonsense to come from that, honestly. Also, if you say she looked like a Nintendo Switch, shut up, shut up. I was trying to make something different and unique. Shut up. And if anything, I would say she looked more like that one character off of Fire Emblem Engage, if we're gonna be honest. Even though I don't care about nothing for Fire Emblem, honestly. But with that outfit, look like she's ready to throw hands. Look like she's ready to avenge some of her fallen comrades due to one bitch's selfishness. And look like she's about to put some people in place. But there's also another character that we gotta look out for which is also a part of the universe that Saki came from, which is the other anime I've been working on, which honestly I wish I need to get back onto because I have forgotten so much of the story. But when it comes down to things, meet Osiri. Osiri is actually just 
I'm made from another universe, from Saki's universe more specifically. And to come down to things, when it comes down to who she is and all that type of stuff, let's just say you don't want to cross paths with her. She is a definite threat in the universe that she comes from as one of the best assassins in the multiverse. You don't want to get in her way, honestly. You think just because, oh, she's just a normal fox person, you know, she, you, she don't have no type of power like that. You don't want to necessarily mess with them. She may not have any type of powers. She may not necessarily, you know, have any special powers like Jay and the others do have. But she's the most best assassin in the multiverse for a reason in that reality. You, you're going to see why, right? And that's essentially what I have for you. She may she may look bland as hell, but, you, you know, you, you ain't going to be ready for what she might potentially do if I decide to take it that route. But when it comes down to things, those are, at least when it comes to the Osiri, at least that's more like, I feel like that's more like an idea of what I could do with her and might show off for her. But she told you it's definitely going to be there for a lot of the stuff. You know, that's just going to be how it is. But when it comes down to things, there is one actually other character that I decided to design, work on, and make, but I'm not going to show it on this video. You will see that on Patreon. If you want to see something a little bit early, you're going to see that on Patreon because that person, at least from what I'm thinking, I'm going to make them a major player in the story going forward. So if you want to know who that person is or what they look like, if you just don't want to wait on the damn episode to drop where they make a debut appearance, whatever episode that ends up being, then you might want to tune in and become a Patreon member. I'm just, I'm just going to be honest. If you want a heads up on who they are and what they look like, I'm just going to be honest with you. But that's essentially all I really have for you for this one. Again, this is very different from what we normally do, kind of. But also, I really want to explain some stuff about the story because I feel like there's a good chunk of it that people are going to be confused on. Some people might not necessarily know exactly how things work. And I kind of want to go ahead and explain that. Because also I feel like there's also some parts of the story or at least the lore of the, how the whole thing works. Is a still a little bit shaky. Like how does certain powers work? Like how does blue power work all the way with reject and release? And how does, you know, willpower and belief kind of works out as a whole type of thing? You know, but I feel like it kind of works out in its own weird way. Like, let's say Konako and Blue have a fight or something like that for some reason. You know, obviously Blue going to have her idea of maybe she can overpower Konako in a way. But she also has to, you know, fight against Konako's will. Which might be something that she's not necessarily ready to deal with. Even if Blue might have the most busted ability, if her belief and willpower isn't strong enough, then Konako can easily overpower it. It just kind of is what it is. Honestly, a lot of the powers, I would say, is also like very vague too, and it's up to the imagination, but that's kind of okay, at least from what I'm thinking, because I feel like, you know, if a character is going to be supposed to have this most busted ability, it should be up to them to master it. And when it comes down to things, it should be up to them what the limit for themselves is when it comes to it. Honestly, with those abilities, you can do essentially anything you want and do whatever you want. However, it really just comes down to the person. You know, if they're going to limit themselves in a certain way, then that's how their power is going to respond to that, right? So that just kind of is what it is. And then again, clashing with, you know, other people's wills and their beliefs too. That's also another part of it that's kind of make it hard to sometimes overcome others especially when someone just straight up nothing but willpower and even if you're stronger with yours it might not be an easy result to get to honestly so again i feel like the powers are fine where they are maybe at least to me and what i'm thinking of but when it comes down to things you know maybe some might question it i don't necessarily know but at least i said it in this video so you at least you'll know so when it comes down to things, that's essentially all I have for you for this one. So hopefully you did enjoy. If you did, be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification on your way out. Also follow me on the socials and if you like to donate the channel, Patreon is available as well. And until then, it's your boy Jay, signing off. Have a blessed day.